What's up, Kansas City? Have a belief in yourself that is bigger than anyone's disbelief. When the sins of our fathers visit us, we do not have to play host. We can banish them with forgiveness as God in his largeness is in his largeness and laws. Those are two quotes by August Wilson, who was a famous playwright, born and raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. My name is Glenn Frizzell. I'm here today with Dr. Wilson, who is Associate Dean of Diversity and Communication Partnership at UMKC, also producer and host Kansas City Currents, which airs KCUR. Did I say that right, Dr. Wilson? Well, I'm not producer. Um, I'm, I'm part of the team of KC Currents. Part of the illustrious team of KC Currents, which can you tell us when that airs? Well, right now the show is going through some transitions. We're doing a pilot that usually airs Thursday mornings at 10 o'clock and then is aired again, I think, Sundays at 5. Sundays at 5. Be sure to listen. If it doesn't now, listening to this woman's voice will calm you as it does me. You talked about being an avid listener of radio in your childhood, also in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. I want to say Philadelphia, but we're going to say Pittsburgh, which is the twin city there. Can you tell us some of the radio shows you recall listening to? Well, I just loved music at first. I mean, and I would listen to any radio show that had music because I, I just loved music. And then back then, they had DJs that really had their own personalities, their own playlists, not like now where everything is syndicated and so you hear the same songs over and over again. And I migrated from that into loving talk radio. You know, the kinds of shows back then where you actually heard two viewpoints and then the listener, it was up to them to decide, you know, which point of view made sense instead of what we have on some talk shows today where it's just one viewpoint being expressed. But I love the exchange of ideas and the energy that two viewpoints could bring and so I became a talk show radio junkie if you will. Interesting I know from listening to the radio W Vaughn in Chicago has some of these type of interesting back and forth talk shows. I'm not too familiar with those in Kansas City uh, but to listen to those you have to be smart. I would say they encourage smartness intelligence. How did that translate into your school life? Well I was a pretty good student uh, growing up although um, I was a pretty good student. I liked school. I liked learning new things. I was fascinated by science and I was a very curious little girl. So I was always, you know, asking the question, why this and why that? One of those kids that the parents like to say, oh no, not another why. But that's kind of how I was. Um, and I was real into exploring nature around the yard and looking at the moon and stars, so I was kind of that kind of kid. Maybe a little tad, tad nerdish, if you will. And I'm sure the moon and the stars look back. <laughs> Can you tell us what your very first job was and how old you were? Oh, well, I started working at a very, very young age. Back then, they didn't ask for ID, and you could get jobs even though you weren't really of age. And uh, interestingly, I was about 14 years old and I grew up, you know, in the inner city of Pittsburgh in public housing. Um, and for whatever reason, I don't know what it was that got into me, I said, I'm just going to quit school in ninth grade. And I think part of that was the era. Um, there was a lot of discontent around civil rights. There, you know, we were just coming away from the riots in Pittsburgh where I walked past the National Guardsmen going to school and curfews. And I mean, there was just a lot of, and I was involved even in high school in high school related civil rights thing. But I don't know, I just decided I'm not going to school anymore. So my father being the wise man he was, he said, well, Susan, you don't want to sit around and be broke, do you? So I said, no, sir. So he gets me a job at a deli where I'm standing on my feet eight hours a day grating cabbage and peeling potatoes and at the end of the week I got a big paycheck of $42 oh, no. and, and after big that paycheck. I ran back to school and I didn't quit until I got a PhD after that because that was scary I'm like to work this hard and this long before a $42 paycheck I need to do something different what's up Kelsey viewers if you hear that that means run don't walk be smart about 
investing your time and talent into educational purposes and achieving. Who are some of your heroes? I want to ask you, but before I, I ask you that, I do want to mention that you are a member of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. And the Lynx, the Jackson County Lynx of Greater Kansas City. Amen, amen, amen. I know in the field of journalism, Casey Currents, um, in Delta Sigma Theta, you also have Soledad O'Brien. Mm -hmm. who, who were some of your particular heroes or sheroes growing up? Well, I definitely think I looked up to my father. He was a guy with only an eighth grade education. He had to quit school during the Depression because he was the second to oldest in his family. And his father, who my grandfather, who was an AME minister, needed the eldest children to help support the family. So he had an eighth grade education, but he was self-taught and well-read. He could talk to you about any political situation around the world. He had deep insight into political struggles, political leaders, and I think hearing those discussions, and also he had a strong appreciation for different cultures. He thought, although he was African American, he spoke fluent Yiddish because he grew up in a neighborhood that transitioned from Jewish to black. And so very early on from him, I got a passion for various cultures, the importance of knowledge, even though he wasn't school, but he was knowledgeable. And I think he was one of my early role models. I do want to mention that you are a doctor and that you do have a degree in psychology. You combine that with sports. What does a sports psychologist do? Well, different sports psychologists do different things. A lot of them work on things like motivation, focus, performance, because there are some athletes that you know, know what to do, but when it comes down to getting on the field, they, they can't follow through, and a lot of that may be nervousness, jitters. But what I do specifically, the National Football League has a national program. There's a national network of psychologists across the country who work on what's called the Substances of Abuse Program. So players who struggle with substance abuse um, are put into a program for two years. And where they um, try to deal with their substance abuse issues. Now, not just players, but anybody with a substance abuse pro a problem. Substance abuse is really a problem, but not the problem. There's usually other underlying problems, and those are the things that I work on to help them build skills and coping skills so they can overcome some of these barriers. What is the most interesting story that you've covered as a host KCUR program, Casey Curtis? Well, I don't know about the most interesting because one thing about me, I have a passion for everything. I have broad interests. But one story that really stands out is when there was the issue about teens on the plaza and the curfew. And I was down there on a Saturday night with my microphone um, capturing uh, the voices of young people, the voices of the police, um, the action that was going down on the plaza at that time. Um, another one is our homegrown um, success story, Shawnice Hayes and her father Maurice Hayes, which a lot of us know from singing on the plaza. That was a very heartwarming story to do. But I've done so many um, stories, I think, that, that are interesting to me. It's hard to pick. What's up, Kansas City? Remember to listen to KCR Current, KC Current. Mm -hmm. Kansas City does have a rich cultural history. Plaza is something that we are proud of most of the time. Can you tell us how Kansas City compares to Pittsburgh? You know what? It, it, what's funny to me is they're very similar in a lot of ways from the standpoint of maybe size. And um, both cities, I think, have good cultural amenities in terms of museums and theater and things like that. Um, and I would, I think that Kansas City may have a larger African American population. Pittsburgh has never had its own uh, elected black mayor there. Um, but um, I think Pittsburgh is a lot more ethnically um, diverse, maybe, from the standpoint that Pittsburgh has a number of ethnic neighborhoods. You know, you have Polish Hill, you have Squirrel Hill, you have The Hill, that's where my hood, where I grew up, we call it the Hill District, which is predominantly black. Um, and 
what's interesting about that is that everybody eats each other's food and at some point they commingle in ways that I don't see them doing here in Kansas City. I was shocked when I came here to see how segregated in some ways Kansas City still is. And what, what section did August Wilson write about? The Hill District, my neighborhood of course. Interesting. My Interesting. historic neighborhood. I want to ask you, January 1st, 2014, the health care law is scheduled and Actually, before you get away from that, you know, he wrote a play called Jitney. And what's interesting about Jitney, Jitney Jitneys were the illegal cabs in Pittsburgh because a regular cab was not coming into the Hill District for any reason to take you anywhere. No and so all of us rode these Jitneys. I mean, even in high school, when the weather was too cold to walk because we didn't have buses, we would pull our money and get a Jitney ride to school. If you work downtown, the jitneys would run the bus line and pick you up and go to work. And what was also interesting about jitneys, everybody knew their numbers even though they didn't advertise. If you called a number or two and they were busy, all you'd have to do was call a neighbor and say, um, I need another jitney number, 2415566. I mean, they were just all around the neighborhood. So, yeah, August did a play about that. I have a very good friend in college who's from Pittsburgh. I'm going to have to bring that up. January 1st, 2014, Dr. Wilson, the health care law is scheduled to take effect. What are your thoughts about how it would affect students, young professionals, especially those who are from underprivileged communities? Well, I come at that from two angles. One, I'm you know, working in a medical school in the field of medicine. One of the things that medical schools are focusing on nationwide is preparing young doctors to meet the Affordable Care Act challenge. A lot of people don't know that when the Affordable Care Act actually comes into full force, many of the people who will be insured will be much more ethnically diverse. And so it's really going to be important that doctors know how to deliver culturally appropriate care so that they can help continue to reduce health disparities, differences in health outcomes based on race and socioeconomics. So all of the young people who are in those kinds of fields are really paying attention to that. I think the other angle for young people is there's many young people, young people are among the largest group of uninsured. And um, what that means is that many young people now will have access to insurance where they didn't before, which is a good thing because, you know, occasionally you hear of people dying because just, they just didn't get the health care that they need. What challenges have you faced as a professional career woman, successfully faced? Well, I think the first hurdle was just getting into a graduate program because when I went, there weren't that many black people in graduate and professional programs. Yeah. Um, and as a matter of fact, it, if it wasn't for the fact that there were some protesters and myself among them that took over the computer building at the University of Pittsburgh at that time to open up business and professional schools, I wouldn't be sitting here today. I was a part of what they call the University of Pittsburgh plan to develop black psychologists. Um, otherwise, I doubt that they would have admitted us. And uh, against all odds, there were, were over 45 psychologists under the tutelage of a man called Dr. Jerome Taylor that graduated when they said we couldn't. So that was the first challenge. Then once you get out of graduate school, if you're African American, you not only have to prove yourself once, but again and again and again. And I think, um, there's challenges on all sides. There's challenges in white environments, because often in my field, I'm the only African American in some environments. So how to navigate that. Um, but you even have challenges in African American environments, because issues like envy and um, the crabs in a barrel kind of dynamic, especially in Kansas City, where opportunities for African Americans are scarce, and sometimes we fight each other over the same opportunities. We don't want to preach to the choir, so to say. We do appreciate you sharing with what's up, Kansas City. I do want to ask you what you are, what projects you are going to be working on in the future. Well, you mean as far as radio? Radio, UNKC, diversity. Well, right now we're working on a big diversity gala that is designed to raise scholarship money for uh, minority students are in pharmacy, medicine, dentistry, and health, and that's on um, 
and medicine rather, and that's on September 21st at Pearson Hall. So that's on the medical school side. I think on the radio side I have some stories in the works, one that's about Paul Anthony Smith who is an artist that's received a lot of attention and another story that will be coming up that I'm working on later about attention deficit disorder as an adult and how it impacts adults. So stay tuned. Yes, definitely. I'd like to thank you for joining with us today. I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell. We're privileged to talk to Dr. Susan Wilson. We do hope that she will come back and share with us in the future. What's up, Kansas City? Be sure to check out more video on www.whatsupkansascity.net. I'm your host, Glenn Brian Frizzell, reminding you to aim for the sky, to shoot for the moon. If you miss, at least you'll land among the stars. Till next time. CMG wants you to always remember the victory we call success goes to the best prepared. When you invest in your community, you are really just investing in yourself. Thanks!